All right. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> we should be live here. Can everybody hear me all right? Everything look good and sound good and everything else? Hopefully everything will sound all right. okay here. Okay, sounds good. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to get right into the subject here. Um, not going to be a real long, long live stream or anything, but uh, um, one of you I actually see you there, KJVM-007. I saw your comment, and I said thank you for it, and thank you for it. Um, uh, the thing about Steven Anderson. So we're going to watch the news thing that you sent me <clears throat> because I think it's something I, I need to talk about. Um, this is an older video here that I did. Um, I think in July of 2020, so not quite two years ago, um, where Steven Anderson's sons were basically sending texts text back and forth, forth, and they were talking about raping girls in their church building and all kinds of really horrible stuff, um, real bad. And I pointed out the fact, um, you know, right in here, uh, they, it's funny because they say in there that the uh, they don't want me to find out. Brian Dillinger, can't even spell my name right, which I did find out. It was sent to me. But um, uh, Anderson saying about things, oh, I took care of it. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Um, and the stuff that they were saying, they were they were talking about uh, sodomy between the, the different pastor's sons within the new IFB. Um, Stephen Anderson's boys were involved in this whole thing. Like I said, they were talking about raping girls and all kinds of stuff. If you've never seen the video, you can watch it. But I point out the fact that in the Bible here, it's uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 gives the qualifications for a man to be a bishop, what we would call pastor nowadays. And the fact is, it says one that, verse 4, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a, if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Um, Stephen Anderson failed at that. Um, he's got plenty of other issues that disqualify him from being in ministry. He's not a real pastor. He's a fake. He's a fraud. I've been saying it for a long time. He comes out of the whole Jack Hiles cult. Jack Hiles did the same exact thing. His son David got caught doing sexually perverted stuff. He shipped him to another Baptist church. He did it again there, and it was just kind of shuffling around. Let's not talk about this. Um, I showed that in my Jack Hiles Exposed videos. And um, Anderson did the exact same thing. After he got caught, his boys, um, he shipped them to some, I think, uh, Roger Jimenez's church out in California or something, Verity Baptist Church, shipped them out there. Oh, let's not talk about it, whatever else. So um, Stephen Anderson is was a, a guy that's been raised up by um, the devil. I'll just say who it is, you know, I, whether it's whatever organization he used, whatever. Um, but uh, Stephen Anderson's been raised up by them, by the devil, um, to try to make Bible believers look bad. And they're always trying to tie him into King James onlyists and whatever else. You know, he's not one of us. And I've been trying to make that distinction because he get he constantly gets media attention, or at least he did in the past. And then he kind of disappeared for a while. And I said, I've said it with different people as we talk about this whole thing. I say they'll they'll bring him back out again, you know, eventually. They'll resurface, he'll come out, and there'll be some news thing and whatever else. Well, here we go. So I thought I'm going to report on it. it just happened two days ago. I'm going to report on this whole thing. Uh we have to keep this guy down and just say, no, Anderson's not real. He's not legitimate. Don't compare him to King James Bible believers. All right. So here we have the um, news thing here. Let me play it. A controversial Phoenix pastor says that he's the victim of swatting. Okay. Can everybody hear that audio? Might be a little bit low. Controversial Phoenix pastor. Did everybody hear that?
So maybe you could write in the comments, just say, okay, you heard it just fine. Okay, let's continue here. Thing. That is when someone calls the police about a major crime at a house or a business, but the whole thing is fake. It's meant to terrify victims with an overwhelming police present to se presence to sending on their home. Phoenix police were called to Pastor Stephen Anderson's home after a 911 call reporting multiple bodies. Pastor Anderson leads the Faithful Word Baptist Church, which is an ultra-conservative church that's made controversial headlines more than a few times. Team 12's William Pitts explains how this prank could have ended deadly. Let's get this out of the way. You probably don't agree with Stephen Anderson. You might not even like him. But this was not a prank. Regardless of what he may say or preach, this could have ended with his family being shot by police. The kids were pointing at a helicopter up in the sky. They were talking about a helicopter. They're saying, come out with your hands up. And of course, my wife couldn't have fathomed that they could be talking to her and our kids. See, this, this is what he just loves. I mean, Anderson just loves this spotlight on him and everything else. He's always been a media you know, little horror and, and things. So back into the, the spot. And this is how he got his big claim to fame. You know, came out and all oh, the border patrol beat me up and everything else. So, yeah. But they were. Phoenix police said they got a call of a possible shooting at the Anderson's home in Ahwatukee on Sunday. There's knocking and knocking at my door. Finally, I hear a voice that says, Steve, this is the police, the Phoenix police. I thought it was my son joking. Okay, Steve, this is the police, the Phoenix police. If it's a SWAT, well, I guess they just call it swatting. It didn't necessarily have to be a SWAT team, but why would they just call him, you know, Steve? It would be Mr. Anderson or something like that. It doesn't really look like it's a, a huge police presence here. The picture that they're putting up, I guess, with one of his daughters there, it really doesn't even look like it was some kind of major deal or whatever else. Why are they making it into some kind of a media thing? Oh, it's a misunderstanding. Okay, fine whatever yeah they blurred out her face and things yeah um but you know just come on here and how much do you want to bet that it was one of his church members that did this just to get him back in the news again you know called the the police and whatever else and things these guys are so desperate for attention there was no shooting anderson believes he was swatted that's when someone calls in a 911 call to someone's house, trying to get the cops to show up. It's even led to police shooting innocent people. Now, usually we would ask, do you have any enemies who could have done this? In Anderson's case, he's made a lot of enemies. All homos are pedophiles. There, I said it. Anderson's church is listed as a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. No homos will ever be allowed on this church as long as I'm the pastor here. He preaches against homosexuality. Their blood shall be upon them. And that, my friend, is the cure for AIDS. And once delivered a sermon calling for former President Obama to die. His church was the site of a protest a few years ago when his sermons went viral. We are deeply disturbed by Pastor Anderson's bigotry. Well, God is about love and tolerance and acceptance. We together absolutely reject this message of hate and violence. Plenty of people like our church too, you know. I don't consider myself an extreme guy. I'm just preaching the Bible. Anderson has been accused of crossing. Yeah, you see that? I don't consider myself an extreme guy. I'm just preaching the Bible. So what's really being demonized here by the media? Those who preach the Bible. I mean, come on. Just so ridiculous. Sing the line many times since he started his church, but he says the swatting call crossed his line. Here's what I would respond is, is there any possible situation where this would have been the right thing to do to call in this kind of thing? No matter what people think about me as a person. Phoenix police say it is a crime to call in a swatting call, but it's the same as false reporting. It's a misdemeanor on the first offense. William Pitts, 12 News. All right, well, thank you. And this isn't the first swatting hoax in the Valley. Almost a year ago to the... Okay, so whatever, they go off on some story there. But, you know, I, I'm going to be kicking the news media a lot more in the future because they're the ones that are responsible for so much wickedness and hatred and things among people and whatever else. And it just, it's insane. The, is the Bible against sodomy? Of course, yeah. But sodomites can get saved. They're not beyond the, you know, they're not reprobate doctrine like Anderson and all these other satanic little, you know, church plants. They all teach this reprobate doctrine, which I've debunked. Um, it's 
total nonsense what they do. It's, it's Calvinism is what they're really bringing out. But, you know, uh, the news media, they just, anything that they can get like this, and they're showing the opposing sides, and they're showing this real inflammatory stuff that Anderson's saying and whatever else. I mean, come on. It's just so stupid. But, again, you know, don't think when you have an enemy like Anderson and the new IFB, don't think that they're down and out because there's been controversy that's come out. Uh, the one thing you know about the Hiles Baptists is they'll always come back and whatever else. I'm sure Jack Scapp, when his prison sentence is done, I'm not even sure when it's done, but um, I'm sure when his prison sentence is over, he'll probably probably be back as well. Um, the assistant pastor to Jack Hiles, his son-in-law, actually. Jack Hiles' son-in-law is Jack Scapp. He's in prison for uh, basically committing fornication with a 17-year-old girl from their church there. So, yeah, nice. Um, but this comment right here, I will answer this comment because it uh, brings up some uh, a good question here that I, I did not uh, really say the thing about. Let me clarify my stand on church buildings again. Um, it says, Brian, I think the issue that you need to clarify the most is whether or not you believe that people who attend church at a particular building instead of in a home or out, out in the woods on YouTube, etc., are saved. And if you would prefer, they break fellowship with you. Okay. Now, um, here's the deal. Okay. Uh, if you have ever gone to a church building, that doesn't mean that you're lost. Okay. I would be condemning myself and a lot of other people that are saved. All right. Sure, but there's here's the whole point. You get into these positions as a preacher where if you say, well, in some cases, I think church buildings are okay. Oh, all of a sudden, then all church buildings are, you know, come under that. Um, so what do I do? Well, I have to take a stand and I have to say, you know what? Um, I'm going to go with the Bible. And the Bible says not one word about going to church buildings building a building and calling it a church and, and the whole system. It's completely foreign to the pages of scripture. That's why I say you should never do it, all right? Because the fruit of it is just always bad. And so uh, are there Christians that do that? Well, of course. Are there Christians that do other kind of things that are not in scripture and, and ultimately lead into trouble? Well, yes, absolutely. Um, so I get, I get put into these weird positions, but see, here's the problem. As a internet ministry, I've had contact with thousands of people over the years, and I'm not joking. It's been many thousands of people. I have the whole totes filled with letters to prove that. And people say, what should I do? Where should I go to church? And I used to say, I used to have the um, King James Bible Believers website or something like this, and it had a list of, of good you know, doctrinally sound Baptist churches. But then I'm getting in, you know, emails from people and they're saying, brother, I went to this church that you recommended or, or it was on that site that you recommended and, and it had this wrong and that wrong and all this other stuff. And, you know, um, talked to an older man the one time uh, from Pennsylvania, actually, when I was living down there before I met my wife. And he told me about his Baptist church that he was going to. And the Baptist pastor there ended up um, killing somebody. Um, over some kind of a weird perverted thing or something like this, murdered somebody. I was running around with some guy's wife or something like this. And I mean, Baptist pastor, um, another guy I used to know, um, talked to on the phone and things. Um, uh, he was the one that set up the live stream that I did with Eric Phelps and uh, his daughters. He had two twin daughters, two little eight year old girls. They were molested by their pastor, Baptist pastor. Again, King James Bible believing, you know, Baptist pastor. Um, another one, family that I've known for a, a while, uh, supporters of the ministry, and they said that the the Baptist pastor that they were going to, the church, and his wife were basically having orgies with other men in the community. The pastor was a sodomite, well, he was a bisexual, I guess, and she, you know, but over and over and over again baptist churches i've gone to there's just problems and trouble and this all this different stuff and i think why is why are there so many problems with these places because they're not in scripture you're going against the scriptures when you have a building and you call it a church i've explained that 
you're getting this this two different lives in church out of church it's terrible all right and there's a uh this guy down here he says about the thing of uh sam gip spelled gip wrong there james knox sam gip peter ruckman um you know those guys get into these things and they just fight all the time that's all that they do just problem after problem um uh ruckman I talked to a guy from his church and I and he said, well, we have to do police background checks because we've had some sexual predators coming in here and they're trying to get into the Sunday school thing. <sighs> Just trouble, trouble, trouble. You know, they tried to destroy him numerous times down there at the Bible Baptist Church and things years ago. You know, and he was going through divorce and people were leaving and all this other stuff. And just you just fight all the time in these Baptist churches. And here's a book. Um. The J. Frank Norris I have known, and uh, this is by his, I think, basically assistant pastor, um, Dr. Lewis Ensminger, and um, and there's an old there's a old drawing in here, uh, the pastor riding on a coupling pole, and I'll see if I can show this here. I won't. It doesn't matter to show it up close, but it's something that I guess uh, I don't know if J. Frank Norris drew it or whatever. But it, up in the front it says Chairman Board of Deacons, and then you have the denominational boss, and then um, uh, highfalutin chair, you know, woman here, and, and all these different church members, you know, up in here, and you know, riding on this this carriage, and then on the way back, in the very back, there's a pastor hanging on, you know, trying to hang on to the thing, and uh, J. Frank Nars. No doubt, one of the best, the biggest Baptist preachers ever. You know, I think Jack Howells claimed to have more people or whatever else, but tr trouble, problems, all kinds of problems. This is early 1900s. So um, to say that, well, church buildings, you know, at one time they were good. At one time they were better. I'll grant you that. Most of the early church buildings in America in the 1800s, going up into the early 1900s, they were preaching from King James Bibles. There were more standards and whatever. But it's never been God's system. That's the whole point. Does that mean that everybody that's ever gone to a church building is lost? No. Like I said, I would be condemning myself. Well, then, because there were saved people that went to church buildings, now church buildings are somehow okay. No, that's not true either. If it's not in the Bible, then you shouldn't be doing it. Period. You know, and that's the stand I take. And if you get these people that just militantly just defend church buildings and you're wrong and you need to go to church, you're not going to church, you're out of fellowship with God, Brian, and you're a false preacher because you speak against churches, I question those people's salvation. I mean, if you acknowledge that, yes, this what we're doing is not in the New Testament, okay. Well, you're going to have a hard time with it. Yeah, I know, brother, but, you know, I'd like to go and I like to hear the singing and, and you know, I like the congregational thing and getting together with people and whatever. Okay, if you're willing to put up with the troubles and the headaches and everything, um, but it's not scriptural. It's not in the Bible. So um, there's a lot of things that you can do in this life and still be saved, right? But there's a reason that um, God wrote his word the way that he did. So um, getting back to the comment here, um, you've come up to the line in some instances, especially since you've been back on YouTube. You're my YouTube guy. Sometimes I go to a building, sometimes I don't. And I've watched you for at least a decade now. You paint church people with a very broad brush. You have some valid points, but some things you say just seem ignorant. But I don't believe you are ignorant in what you're saying. So you're, you're just mocking people, I guess. Um, everyone has their thing that not everyone is going to agree with. If two people agree on absolutely everything, someone is lying. I think you should address what I pointed out above because anyone with any maturity that has watched and learned from you for any amount of time and knows you better than the, the questions you presented at the beginning of this video is probably wondering that. That's why I'm addressing this. Um, you know, I am... Uh, you know, I get irritated with people because I, you know, people try to treat me like I'm some kind of an ignoramus that doesn't know anything. I was raised going to church buildings. I've been in church buildings, you know, 
longer than a lot of you have been alive. Okay, not all of you. I realize I have viewers that are older than I am, but I'm just saying, I mean, I don't, I'm not ignorant on the subject. And I've never been in one church building that was just really worth going to ever. Um, well, we have one here. We just, we, yeah, yeah, I know the arguments. Yeah, whatever. Um, so I, I just think at this point in time with the whole, uh, pandemic and everything else and the church is shutting down and all that it just really shows what they're all about and um, and that's why you know I can't just say to people that, that watch the videos on this ministry I can't just say hey um, go find a good New Testament local church I can't do that and I'm not going to do that quite frankly most Christians need to spend some time by themselves with the Lord and you go to some church building somewhere, um, you're going to get messed up in some way, shape, or form. You'll be led into some kind of a thing that's not right. I've seen that happen many times. Study the Bible on your own. Develop that personal relationship with the Lord. Walk into some kind of a church building and whatever else, you'll be able to tell then. But a newly saved Christian go, going to one of those places, ugh, ugh, man, I mean, maybe... You know, oh, you could make an argument a hundred years ago. Yeah, but it's still not New Testament. That's the whole point. Are we Bible believers or are we not? Well, yes, brother, we're Bible believers, but, you know, and, and I get the thing. Well, you, you know, what, where's YouTube at in Scripture? It's not. Okay, but YouTube is a public forum where I can get the people in a public sense here. Same as I'd go to some street corner in some city or whatever else. It's a public place. Um, do I recommend YouTube? Is it, is it a wonderful place and whatever else? No, it's a cesspool, you know, but that's this world. Um, so hopefully I answered the question there. But uh, so. And. Uh, You know, I'm just looking at some of your comments over there and things. And, you know, when you see so much stuff, after a while, you just, you know, you say, I just, I can't go back. I, I don't want to go through that whole thing again. It's just, it's not even about being hurt. It's just being about, you know, okay, this is so irritating. This is ridiculous. I can't believe that they're doing this. And the fighting over what color carpet should we have? And, you know, and, and um, you know, whatever else. It, it's, ugh. So, um, but, you know, I, I find it very, very cultic that the church buildings can't even take a rebuke from someone like me, the church building preachers, and they, you know, they'll label me as some kind of a, a cult guy or something. And, oh, he's just a hermit that lives out in the woods or whatever else. And when I'm the one that's standing by the Bible, I'm the one that's trying to do things the scriptural way. You know, see, that's a problem that I have with this whole thing. You know, we're going to stand, you know, for our church buildings, regardless of what the Bible says, and we'll condemn Brian Denlinger. And it's not just me. I knew another guy actually was a PBI graduate. Um, John Kodabash was his name. I was, I knew him years ago. And, um, and he said he was originally a pastor, he had a Baptist church, and he started to study the thing of, you know, home churches and why the church buildings are wrong and he got out of the baptist church thing and he was just you know doing things the new testament way and um called up um i think the bookstore bible baptist bookstore and they you know whoever was working there knew him from when he was in school down there and um <clears throat> they said to him uh, about you know we just had some people contact us from your area and he said, oh, he said, well, you know, give me their contact info. I'll see if I can go visit with them or whatever. And, and they said, we'll do that when you get a real church. And it's the attitude. You know, um, I'm not the one that should have to defend my beliefs. Okay. You should be the one that defends your beliefs if you have a church building. Because you have no New, new Testament for that. All right. So. Um, I guess that's going to be it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, you know, watch out for the Stephen Anderson thing. I mean, we need to. I mean, just add it to your prayer list and just say, Lord, please help the new IFB not to come back and and whatever else. And just let's just keep condemning them and things. They're dangerous people. And they're really going to try to make laws get passed that would come after anybody who uses a King James Bible. That's why we have to continually fight against them. So, um, okay, I guess that's going to be it. Um, so, yeah, I'll prob probably be doing um, some more live stream type stuff in the future where we'll get more into questions and answers and things. But um, for now, I'm going to close this one. Thank you everybody out there for watching and um, have a, a interesting video coming up. I just literally heard my computer finish rendering the video and it's just not anything overly spiritual. It's just us doing some firewood. Um, and um, getting excited over here. And um, we were doing some firewood uh, yesterday, I think it was. Yeah. And um, so we just put a little video together just to show people some of what we do in our, you know, lives up here in Maine. And um, I, I'm going to be doing some more of that stuff, like I had said, after the off-grid seminar thing. Just kind of bring out some stuff just to show a variety of, you know, just different things. So... Uh, watch for that. I'm going to be uploading it as soon as this is done. It should be out here this afternoon. You have to see a certain somebody here working hard. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I helped. Yes, you did. God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, all right. Um, we'll see everybody in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.